Well, Mark, back in 2020, in the middle of COVID and no supporters and everything, the Trust took the bold decision to take over the club when it was close to oblivion. And right from day one, you always said you want to stabilise it and then look for other investment. You've found some now. How happy are you as the chair of the Trust and the chair of the football club? Absolutely delighted, Phil. Um, I love it when a plan comes together. And we had a plan back in 2020. Uh, to step in, stabilise the club and then look to bring people in who, would, in who would love it as much as we did and take it forward and we couldn't have wished for anybody better. So yeah, it's been a great success. Of course the guys at either side of you, Chesterfield, uh, uh, Chesterfield fa fellas, you, you can't wish for any better than a local. Uh, no, they love the club as much as we do and they want to take it forward as well. So yeah, it couldn't be any better. No, brilliant. Great times for the club. Well, Ash, you, you've, you've been sort of rolling your sleeves up on a day-to-day -day yep. basis for, what, 18 months or so. Uh, have, have you fallen in love with a club more than you possibly expected to? Yeah, uh, yes. I think that's safe to say, yeah. The, uh, the people uh, won't make any organisation anyway. and it's not, So I, I'm very lucky that I get to spend time with the people inside the football club. Now, not just Paul and, and Danny and, and Gary and, and, that, and the players. I, I, it's the, the staff as well. And it, they're what makes this place, you know, tick. They're, they're a special group of people. It's so good for them to be having the season that we're having, and and it's you know it's just a reward for all the hard work that they do. And does the season that Chesterfield are having the, this season so far does that help to galvanise and bring everybody together? Is it is well, it easy when things are going well? It doesn't do any harm. I mean, it, in, yes. It, it, I think it's probably a product of the hard work that we've done, we reset, we did a bit of work in terms of how we expect people to be and what we expect them to do and you know what we'd like them to, how we'd like them to behave a little bit and, and, and it's, they've taken it on board and it's working and I think as a result of that you get good, you get good effects off, you know, you get good effects. It's very similar to what Cookie does with, with the team, you know, they do the hard work on the training ground. There's no guarantee when they turn up every day they're going to win, but hey, hey ho, all that practice, all that hard work, and they do win. Well, shareholders, Phil, were given a, a lot of words about what all the resolutions were tonight. In, in short, what does it mean in plain, simple English as has happened at the club? In simple English, um, Ash and I have agreed to put another another two million pounds into into the club, which uh, covers the club for the balance this season, and mainly, fingers crossed, uh, bon win bonuses and promotion bonuses, and then sets us up for next for next season. Um, putting that money in, we've obviously talked with the trust, know the trustees, have done a great job. And, and the community trust is a fantastic thing for the for the town and the club. We talked to them, and we've really got to, the club has got to the point where the trust can't stay as the majority owner. It hasn't got any material amounts of money. It confuses people when it's trying to raise money as to is it a football club or is it a charity. And actually, we decided it was a good time to move to majority ownership. So Ash and I own about eighty percent of the club, but the trust stays in. Yep. Stays fifteen percent. Still got a seat at the table. Still a key part of the decision making. We're not changing any of the directors in the short term. Uh, well, in the medium term, we've asked them, asked them to stay on, really because of their expertise and all the knowledge in the past. And things will really continue as is. Other than, on top of just the money, Ash and I can promise the league and promise suppliers, who now we're getting a big club and more interested, but can promise that we can continue and effectively underwrite the performance and the fact that we'll be there to pay the bills of, and just, the, of the club. Yeah, And just for people who are a little bit unsure about what equity and everything might mean, that this £2 million is all shares, it's not a loan, it's not a repayable no. loan, it is equity in the club that's that's at your risk now. Uh, abs absolutely, Phil. And, and we said today, we've done that on purpose, it's the simplest, it's the easiest. We actually have I'd, I'd say too many flavours of shares and different loans in the club. The, the luckily the loans are with people who like the club, the two councils, Sport England. But over time, we will look to simplify that mm. and reduce that we don't need and, and reduce levels of debt. Simplify how the club looks to the outside world, which I think with the new football regulator, if we are fingers crossed, Touchwood uh, move, moving up, moving up into the into the into the EFL, nearly there. Or we even ever go into into higher leagues. Uh, I think it would be a good thing to have that additional 
transparency on the, on the structure. But the fact of the matter is we are now at risk for the club, so it's just as easy to, to be equity. Mm. Uh, but we, we love working with the trust. Absolutely. How the, how the trust is and the relationship. And in terms of long-term loans, it's just the ones that you were saying there, the, the councils and Sport England uh, uh, yeah, and bounce-back loans. And, the, and, the, and there's been... The bounce back loan is, is a very small, I think it's 30 odd thousand yeah. pounds. Sport England is 1.2 million pounds, but it's 20 years and 2%. The two councils, after some years of, of, of not paying, not making capital repayments, they said that we, the club can have a holiday. We have reached, we started paying those and we're actually up to date and on time, which is helping the councils, both of whom are having a, a difficult time, but are very supportive yeah. of the trust, the club. And, and, and what we're doing for the what we're doing for the town. I've got a loan. I've also got some preference shares. We'll look at those pieces in the structure. I, I've no intention of taking any money out of the club. Um, so we'll see whether that's the best way for the club to be financed, or whether we indeed go to everything as shares in in the in the future. And one of the things about day to day or week to week, probably, uh, Ash. Are the levels of the crowds, it's the highest crowds it will have had since moving here on 1866 uh, Sheffield Road. It'll be the highest home crowds since 1971-72 mm -hmm. season by the time it's wrapped in. How important were the trust in getting people to come for the first time to this ground? Youngsters with their parents or grandparents or cousins or whatever. How important were they to get what always used to be the faithful 4,000 to be the faithful 6 or 7,000. Ex extremely important. We, I mean, we work really hard with them. Uh, every game, they get 500 tickets, at, you know, which they're able to then pass on to people who probably couldn't, you know, not as fortunate as, as the three of us, four of us. You know, uh, they can pass on to, to give them an entry. They can come to the football, and I, I know Actually, if I had a text today from a headmaster of a school uh, that we gave tickets to, whose grandparents have now taken them to every game since, uh, and they get very little parental. You know, it's just, it's a difficult background, but you know, they're they they they've got pride in themselves. They've got pride in the club. It gives them pride in the town, and it, it gives them a sense of belonging. And it's it's been really important. It's not just getting people in in the ground, it's, it's what actually a football club can do to an individual. Mm. Uh, and when a football club is successful, like we're doing, it's what it does to an entire community. Yeah. You know, it's, it's an amazing thing, isn't it? You, you, walking around, you're seeing little kids in Chesterfield yes. kits and all excited with the players and, and people are talking about it everywhere. And, and the more we engage with all sections of society, whether the ones who can afford it, great, please come, please come and have a great time, spend your money. And the ones who can't, we don't want them to miss out. So we're going to continue supporting that. And, and, and Mike, Brilliant. is that the greatest legacy of the trust that you come now and you see hundreds and hundreds of children at every match, boys and girls, and you know the last few years at, at Saltergate, if you saw any 162, you, you, you thought something was, was up. I, it's fantastic. I think we're a true family club now. Mm. You've got a lot of ladies coming and a lot of children coming along with the, the guys as well. And I think the job that the trust has done working with the club and that relationship between the club and the trust has never been better when we first took over, or when I first came down to the Trust, the relationship was non-existent, to be perfectly honest. Now, it's integral, and we work very hard. I mean, the, the, the club are brilliant with the Trust. They give us 500 tickets, as Ash said, and we can go into you know, areas where people can't afford to come to the game, and we can offer them that facility to come. And that builds, then, um, on week on week, and you know, it's great. They're, they're supporters of the future. Phil, you came here to put a few quid in to build the bar. What went right <laughs> or was it wrong? <laughs> what went right? I think we're very... After, after, sorry, we're all... Where do you we're start? All, we're all, where, do, where do you start? It, it's been a great... It is, we're on a great journey. It's not just me, I've, and I'm really privileged to be part of that. I didn't intend to do this. I didn't intend to own a football club. There is only one football club I could possibly ever own, and, and, that's, Ch and that's Chesterfield, and it's a town, but everybody knows, knows what I mean. And so as I look back, it's great. My wife, my family are, f are fully vested in it. I think that's the right word, and fully, and fully supportive. Um, we'll see where we go. 
Uh, it probably stops me getting another job. But hey, but, but until my brother has had enough of me interfering at my house. Uh, but no, yeah, I'm li you. living it, Phil. I mean, who could not find this a great privilege? Yeah, um, absolutely. To do what to do what we're doing to be part of what Paul and the team and the Bacchus staff are, are, are achieving. What a privilege.